Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Wait till you see what I have for us today. You know what that is? It's a root ball from a rose bush. Also from Tuffy Marginez. Jeff tells me he was out on one of his hikes and he found this sitting on a sidewalk and he picked it up and he said it was really heavy but he carried it a quarter mile back to his pickup and brought it home and sent it to me. Now it's not real heavy anymore uh, it's not light but it's not you know exceptionally heavy. Uh, it does have a lot of protrusions that I think I'm just gonna have to cut off. I hate to you know I would love to incorporate it every little thing I possibly can I always do but sometimes something's got to go. So I'm going to take this over to my bandsaw and I'm going to cut these off fairly flush with the body of the piece. So there we have it. That's uh, roughly nine and a half by eight and a half by five and a half inches tall. Weighs about, I don't know, four pounds. And obviously we're going to lose a lot off of here. We, we just have to in order to make it look like a bowl. But there's going to be plenty of nature left in it, I can tell you that. We're not taking off any more than we have to. So what I'm going to do is work from this side down. Uh, just try and round this up a little bit. I don't want to touch anything up near the top edge. So I put a piece of tape here to stay on that side of the tape. And I can only turn it about 500 RPM. Let me get my mask and face shield on. I have my 5 8 inch bowl gouge and we'll get to turning. All right, let's start working on the bottom here a little bit. Some of you might have thought, as did I, uh, you know, that this, this could come apart at any point. It doesn't look like a solid piece of wood, you know, all these rather large gaps. But it seems to be everything's connected. I don't see anything wanting to fall off of here. Still can't pick the speed up. That's because I haven't touched the top. We're about 570 there. I still haven't decided on a shape yet. At this point, I'm starting to think I want to round it. And, and go ahead and touch the top edge because there's still going to be plenty to see kind of make a you know one of those whatever you call that I don't know that looks like something got burned there maybe I think I should probably uh, I gotta go sharpen up again harder than it looks I'll be right back well I decided I do want to round this up I want to round over this edge right here there's there's so much to see you know with all of this and all of this there's just so much to see that we don't need this little bit of bark that's up here. So I'm going to round it up and we'll see what that looks like. Can't put it back, but I, I'm pretty convinced that's the way to go. Let me get my mask and face shield back on and I'm all sharpened up. I'll get back to the side profile in a minute. Right now I want to uh, finalize the bottom, create a, a lip for this to set on and create a tenon. And I need to do that before I can finalize the outside here.
about 1,250 RPM. See how close we are here. At least it's pretty solid all the way around. A few cracks, but mostly, mostly there. It's getting a little thin, and if that goes, there's nothing for it to sit on between here and here. Well, I guess right there a little bit, huh? Yeah, that'll probably work. Let me grab my uh, diamond point tool to work on the sides of this tenon. Just had to put a fresh burr on it. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, this is pretty stable except for out here, but right here it's still plenty strong. Well, half the art of something like this, knowing when to quit. Fairly happy with my chisel work here. Not totally happy, but of course I'm going to be using my sandal flex on a lot of this. Okay, I'm going to start with my sandal flex. You've probably seen me use this before. I'm going to sand the entire thing while it's spinning, and then I'm going to sand while it's not spinning in this direction to get in these grooves and whatnot. So let me get my mask on and I'll show you how that's going to work. And then I'll reverse the lathe and stand on the tailstock side. So while it's going that way, I'm coming down against it. And then I'll just stop the lathe and go in the groove. And it's going to take some time. Then I'll switch to a two inch sanding disc and just sand normally the outside of the ball up through 400 grit. This already feels pretty nice though. It just, it just feels good, you know? There's so much to feel. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Then, I, like I said, then I'll switch over to two inch sanding disc and just sand it normally while it's spinning up through 400 grit. I'll bring you back when it's time to put some sanding sealer on here and then we'll go with a shellac finish for this piece. See you in a bit. Well, I'll tell you what. That was about the most difficult sanding job I've ever had to do. I've been at that for maybe three hours. But it's done now, and it feels like a bowling ball. Just, just smooth, just real smooth. So I'm just putting a coat on the outside here, and I call the outside the turned part, not the unturned part. I will, of course, get to the unturned part here in just a minute, but I wanna get this on the outside first to seal it up so that when I'm brushing, it doesn't leave a a line on the finish part. My goal here is just to cover everything. Get get the sanding sealer everywhere I possibly can. So I'll put on uh, at least two coats of sanding sealer. I think I got it all covered so now I need to take a rag and wipe off the outside. Just so there's no built-up edges. And I think that's about it. 
So I'll come out in the morning and put a second coat on and, well, sand it first, put a second coat on, see how it looks, see if we need a third coat. Have a good evening. Now you can begin to see that crack that I'm talking about on the outside. And it's not really a crack, it's just a natural void. Boy, this is going to be some beautiful stuff in there, huh? I just want to check and see if anything's getting loose or wobbly and it doesn't look like it, doesn't feel like it. So far so good. When Tuffy sent this to me, uh, he said that he didn't think it was quite dry and it felt dry to me but now that I'm touching the shavings coming out of there, they're uh, quite moist. So it is not dry through and through. Also I wanted you to see this crap that I'm talking about. The, it's not, again, it's not a crack, it's a, a natural void in the piece. If I hold up a light there, you can see, you can see what we're dealing with. And I don't, I don't want half of this to go flying off. I don't want any part of it to go flying off. So that's why I'm, I'm just going slow, I'm just being careful, I'm being very, I'm handling the chisel very gingerly. And it's just going to take some time. I am going to do something about this top edge. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to use my uh, large round nose negative rake scraper again because I don't want to subject this to a lot of stress. And I think if I go after it with a gouge, it'll just be too much stress. So I'm going to kind of flatten off the top, smooth it off a little bit and try and round this in here. I could make the walls just a little thinner. Uh, where's that part that I was concerned about? Yeah, right here. I am, I am about halfway into, into it at this point, and I, I don't want to go much thinner than that. So, but I do want to flatten it off and kind of round it in a little bit. So let me grab that scraper. Yep, that's good. Yeah, I don't think I want to go any thinner than that. I know that's thick, but that's just the way it has to be. Just want to see where we're at. Looking good. I was just looking at this. I don't know if you can see this one. Yeah. That goes way in there to where we're probably down to an eighth of an inch or less in thickness. So I don't really want to go out any further. I, I like this. I like this crack. It's not that I don't mind it. I like it. But I don't think I want another one. And I don't think with this tool rest I can get in there any further than I am. So we'll just keep pecking away. I'm sure I've got a good inch down there. But just in case. 
Yeah, about an inch and a quarter. This 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 gap, this crack, this opening, this void is coming over here quite a ways. But there's nothing corresponding to it on this side, so I I, I think we're okay. Starting to wonder how I'm going to get in there and sand. And I probably don't mind having about a three quarter inch bottom on here. Got three quarter inch sides anyway. Or maybe thicker than that. Yeah, probably an inch thick. Well, I've decided to stop and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to scrape. Uh, I've got about an inch thick bottom. But I also have about an inch thick side, so maybe that works out okay. I'm worried uh, about the sides. Like I told you, there's this very special piece. You can't tell from where you are, but in fact, you can't even see it. This piece right here. It's very prominent on the outside. And if, if that was gone, the piece would lose a lot of its charm. And you can see right here, you can kind of see where it's coming through and I'm afraid if I go through that I'm gonna lose it and I don't want to lose it it's important so I'm gonna scrape Okay, maybe this won't be as bad as I thought it would. Looks like everything's reachable. Uh, the bad part about doing this is gaps like this will catch this. Try as I might to uh, only allow the top part to touch. It'll, it'll get grabbed by this edge and probably other edges like here. Maybe when I'm doing the top right here. That sort of thing. Anyway, so I'll show you how that's going to work. And then what that also does, the sanding, is it sharpens these edges. You know, the, the more you wear away here, the sharper this edge is going to get. So when I'm all done with the sanding, I'm, I'm starting with 80 grit and I'll work up through 400. When I'm all done, I'll take some uh, strip sandpaper and I'll, I'll do this. Just to, I don't want to touch any of this. I just want to touch that edge. I don't want to touch out here, just that edge, just to smooth it so that anybody sticking their fingers in there don't get cut or whatever. Okay, so let me get my mask on and I'll show you how the 2 inch sanding disc is going to work. The lathe will be turning at 350 RPM. Whoop, see, just like that. Maybe it is going to be a pain. There's not much I can do about it. <laughs> it's going to be a pain. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. Wow. Looking forward to that. See you back here in a couple hours. We'll put some uh, sanding sealer in there. It's going to look great. So that's just the first of uh, probably three coats of sanding sealer, maybe two. We'll see how it goes. So I'll see you back here when I've got all the sanding sealer and shellac on. And we're ready to turn it around and remove that tenon. Don't go anywhere. Okay, the time has come. I ended up with three coats, three coats of sanding sealer on the inside. I think it was two coats on the outside and two coats of shellac inside and out. I'm gonna, I've got this block of wood mounted up. It does have some non-slip material on the end, but it won't reach to the bottom of the bowl. So I'm going to put this second piece of non-slip material over that and bring up the tailstock. And I still have my center hole there for reference. So I'm just going to apply a little pressure and bring up my tool rest. And I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge. 
and begin to remove this tenon. Turn the speed up to about 600 RPM and just start removing that tenon. Just want to check for clearance and we have clearance and we've got a pretty good edge around this raised area so I'm going to go ahead and leave that and I want to get just a little bit closer here and this is starting to break away I, I can't have that bowl jumping out of this live center gotta be careful I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back gouge and I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400. And I'm going to turn it down to about 200 now. And I'm just going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And we'll complete the cut. I didn't want that to happen, but sometimes it does. And it's not quite cut through. It just it just was breaking away on me. And it just slipped out of there. It wasn't quite done. So I'll take a chisel and just cut that off. And I'll do that over here on the workbench. And now I'll just sand it up. Well, there we have it. One rose root ball in the books. What do you think? Isn't that amazing? Look at that. That is something else. Now here you can see the part that I was worried about. And you see how important this part right here is to the overall look of the piece and if you look inside opposite that you can see where it would have come apart if I'd gone any thinner and that would have been a shame that's a that's a key part so that is why the walls are pretty dang thick but that's okay with me. I hope it's okay with you. It's a rose root ball after all. Kind of looks like a ball. Just round it all over. There's the bottom. I, I like it. I hope you like it. This is a special piece to me, and the reason it's a special piece, it came from Tuffy. Now when Tuffy sends me wood, he generally contacts me and says, hey, there's some wood on the way, look for it. Well, this piece showed up two days after my wife passed, which is just two months and eight days ago. And he didn't announce it. He didn't tell me it was coming. And I think... I think he was saving this for something special and that's what makes this piece special to me pretty cool
If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. Your comments are always welcome and I respond to all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.